Hey guys, Dan Blute here. So I want to go over the glove action and what our hands are supposed to do in our delivery because as I've worked with more and more pitchers over the years, I've found that the glove action is very, very important and it really sets the stage for everything that happens later. So basically if you watch pitchers, they're going to have this synchronicity between their hands and their leg. They're generally going to move up together and they're going to move down together. It's almost uncanny as you watch how they tend to sync up at the exact same pace, right? So what we want with our our landing position, when we stride, our goal is that when this cleat touches down, obviously I'm in turfs, our glove arm should be up, whether it's bent arm or long arm. I personally teach long arm. Either one, you see a lot of major leaguers, they're, everyone's slightly different, but I teach long arm. And if you're here and you still throw really well, that's fine. But again, we're looking for glove arm up, chest slightly angled back, hips are slightly angled forward, back leg is pretty long, and then we're trying to land on our heel, all right? So from that position, we are gonna backtrack and try to figure out how we get there. And when the big thing is timing up our glove arm to go with our stride leg. So this hits at the same time this hits its peak. We don't want this to get up too soon because then anytime it's already hit the spot where it wants to land, when our hips are about to rotate open and, and accelerate our, our trunk and, and the, the arm and our ball, um, if this gets there too soon, it's gonna end up continuing to move and then we're gonna fly open. So when I work with pitchers, when they get here really early, they tend to keep going and find somewhere else to move to and then they screw everything up. So we basically want continuous motion and we don't wanna hit the, the top of our glove arm swing until that foot's gonna hit. So our goal is to time them up. So to tie them up properly, we can't have them go out exclusively because when they go out exclusively, it's already at the top. So it has a very short travel before it's at its ready position and my foot hasn't done its thing yet. So if you watch young pitchers, it looks really awkward. They come up, they do this, and they land. In varying degrees, their arms are going out and they never land in sync and they almost always fly open, landing here with their front side. The converse is also true. If we get our arms stuck down too long, it can be tough to get up in time as well and then our throwing arm drags. So in general, I teach the pinky finger going down, and then once the pinky finger's down, pointing it up towards the sky at about like a one o'clock angle. So this is 12, that's about one. So when we go down with our hands and break here with our palm facing the ground, I'm gonna take the pinky my glove and I'm gonna follow that up. And that's usually gonna be the exact same pace as my stride. So we don't really want to go straight down and straight up like a pendulum of a clock. That's just not a super athletic move and it doesn't give us much margin for error because as soon as we get any amount on this side of our body, we're going to rotate open. So when we go down and then we kind of go towards that one o'clock, it's going to help keep me closed a little bit longer and if my arm's a little bit across my body, it's just going to give me a little bit of margin for error to keep my chest back and angle this way, which if you looked at my shoulder hip separation video, you'll see like this is what we're looking for at landing, a slightly angled back chest. That's what's gonna get our lower half separated from our upper half and it's gonna help us get all that elasticity and that whip through that creates velocity. So to summarize, we should always look for a synchronicity between our, our lower half and our upper half, our leg and our hands. They should move up and down together and the hands should go down and crack Kind of like you're cracking an egg. I know that's an old school thing and some people disagree with it. But when you go back down, it puts us in the position here where now these have basically equal travel. As I stride with my leg, my glove arm has about the same distance to go. And then I'm landing in a consistent spot with my glove arm up. I'm closed. And now I can tuck my glove and go. All right. So the hand break is really important. And if you really need to fix it, just in the mirror, act like you're conducting an orchestra and then progress and then progress and then just continue to work and then check out some of my other drills for the handbrake.